We need to order that. So would you join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Misty, I'd ask if you call the roll, please. conflict of interest with any item that we're voting on tonight, I would ask you to uh, ensure that the entire council knows prior to voting. You have in your packages three sets of minutes uh, from the March uh, 16th regular council meeting and two special council meetings on the 26th and the 1st of April. I would ask for a motion to approve uh, all of those minutes. I make a motion to approve minutes A through C. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes uh, from those three meetings. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. You have in your packages uh, under claims, bills in between of $91,106.14. I'd ask for a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve bills in between the amount of $91,106.14. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the bills in between. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Those bills in between are approved. We have also in your packages current claims for $102,672.93. I'd ask for a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the current claims for $102,672.93. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the current claims. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Current claims are approved. In your packages are Wells Fargo credit card charges for $3,860.28. I'd ask for a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve Wells Fargo credit card charges for $3,860.28. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the uh, credit card charges. Are there any questions or comments, discussion? Are <coughs> done? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Our next item on the agenda is communication from the public. Are there any communications from the public? I see none. Moving on, uh, the next item on our agenda is a SHEDCO update. Uh, Andrea, are you here? We'll uh, move on, and uh, I'd ask for, we do have a public hearing at 7, 10 p.m., uh, so as we uh, move on, I'd like to uh, cover the personnel actions, and we can prove personnel actions uh, A through P. I make a motion to approve personnel, act personnel ha actions A through P. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve personnel actions A through P. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, those actions are approved. We'll move on to committee reports administrative and finance, uh, Bob and Caitlin. 
Um, because of the Easter holiday, uh, the admin finance meeting has been moved to this Wednesday, yeah. 1 o'clock. And I believe we're going to try our first uh, Zoom meeting. Is that mm -hmm. correct, Mayor? Uh, that may or may not be correct. We, uh, we're <laughs> going to try Zoom tonight, and apparently uh, there's been some issues and problems with it. So we'll, uh, we'll wait and see. Okay. And uh, get that word out once we get the bugs worked out. All right. Thank you. The Airport Advisory Committee, Bill. Okay, uh, the Airport Advisory Committee did not convene for their rescheduled meeting on March 30th because of the COVID-19 crisis. However, the following important information was exchanged via email and telephone between Ed Jensen, Mayor Cotty, myself, and Administrator John Gregory. Uh, first of all, there were approximately 45 flight operations at the airport in March. The airport sold $2,935.03 worth of aviation fuel in the month, month of March. Airport manager Ed Jensen notified us that he has moved his retirement date from November to August. In item four, KLJ engineers have informed us that it appears there is language in the recently passed stimulus bill that provides for 100% federal funding through the FAA Airport Improvement Program for 2020 entitlement grants. This means that, that the design of the hangar project could move forward with no cost share to the state or city. If this were accurate, it would save the city about $4,500 on the design of the 10-unit T-hangar project. The construction project is contingent upon the proceeds from the PLS uh, mining contract. Uh, lastly, planning is proceeding for the June 6th family fly-in event, but it's taking into consideration restrictions and possible postponement or cancellation because of the COVID-19 crisis. Our next meeting will be Thursday, April 30th uh, at 8 a.m. It's currently scheduled at the Hot Springs Airport. This may change, uh, be changed to the Mueller Center. And if that does occur, it will be reflected on the city calendar. Okay, thank you. Looking for uh, fall, uh, Custer Fall River Regional Waste Management District, Ron? Uh, nothing to report. I don't know when there will be. Okay, thank you. Downtown Historic Preservation Commission, Craig? We did not have a meeting, and I don't know when you will have one. Okay. So. I tried to email everybody, but nobody answered. Okay. Evans Plunge Advisory Committee, Allison. Oh, we canceled our last meeting and then decided to cancel this meeting as well since there's not much going on uh, there. They are working on um, putting some flooring on the upstairs, so they are still doing some of that uh, work. We plan on uh, our next meeting if, to, to make sure that it happens. We're not sure if it will go through Zoom or uh, what will be going on at that point, but that will be in May. Okay, thank you, Allison. Parks, Recreation, Beautification, and Cultural Development Day. And I may have to interrupt you if your report is long. Should be fairly short. Okay. Parks and Rec met this past Wednesday, reviewing some of the modifications for the basketball hoops in the court and the park. Uh, we'll be doing some work there um, inside uh, at the MRF. Doing our own modifications means we can't seem to find anything that's going to fit the way our design is. Um, we've looked at uh, some of the destruction that was done during the fiber optics. We are moving forward with that, waiting for a meeting, and pretty much that is it in a nutshell. Our oh. next meeting will be at the first Wednesday of this following mo uh, coming month, and if anything comes up as far as the dog park or any of the other parts, we'll be letting you know on the uh, city's website. Okay, good. Thank you. And very good timing. We approach uh, 710. Uh, we'll go ahead and open the uh, hearing. We're, we're at a public hearing for the use permit on review. 
James D. Rohde, owner, and Michelle Adcock, tenant, cooperate at home preschool daycare at 2142 Minnacotta Avenue in Hot Springs. I will go ahead and call that uh, hearing to order now, and I would ask uh, if there is anyone in the uh, audience that would like to speak either for or against uh, uh, this uh, operation of a home preschool and daycare. Michelle, are you here? Yes. Would you like to come up and, and just uh, kind of uh, uh, share your vision with uh, the council, please? And about the lack of fencing or like the construction type mesh kind of the green fencing in the back is there any plans to fence in anything um, in the future the green mesh is the fence right now and that is because there is a wall there there will be I don't want to utilize the front just because of the busy street um, if in the future I do decide there would be a fence that I would have to go through gym So they'd be picking it from the back in the alley? Yeah. Okay, any other questions? I have a couple. Um, I noticed, I drove by yesterday, and you have the public notice sign posted, so thank you for that. Uh, and then the other requirement is to send certified letters to everybody within 200 feet, I believe. Yep. Have you done that? Have, yeah. Has anybody responded back? Um, responded. I even mailed one to the Okay. Thank you. Okay. 
Any other questions or comments? Okay, well, thank you. We, uh, I think we left their hand up. Okay. They need to come up here. I'm going to switch that off before we go. Thank you, Carl. While they're doing that, do we approve this tonight, or is this going to be on the next agenda? Uh, we can approve it tonight. Okay. Uh, my name is Graham Lavar. I currently live just over here, but I'm actually in the process of putting an offering on the house next door. Um, can you speak up a little bit, please? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm in the process of putting an offer in on the house that is next door to the proposed property. Um, the only major concern that I would have if I were to purchase the house is that that alley is one way in and out. It does not loop. Um, there's two, three garages back there. Um, so I guess traffic in and out of that alley would be my biggest concern. I'm all for free enterprise and what you're doing, like all for that. But it's kind of a, the location's kind of tough as far as traffic goes. You've got Minicotta, which is a main thoroughfare to the state home. A lot of people use it to go to and from and up the hill to the school. Um, and then the alley being one way in and out might be a little congested. Um, again, not that I'm against the, the preschool daycare, not that's just one concern I have, or I think any buyer would have who would be looking at that property. So, I guess that's that's really my only concerns. So. Okay. Anyone have any? I got a question for Grant. Are you going to be here for the whole meeting? Possibly. Bob Nelson needs to talk to you about pouring the wall. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Pertaining to this situation, this, so everybody understands, this is a permit on review. Any issues that pop up over this at, uh, at any point in time can be addressed to the city, and we will review it. Uh, obviously, we're more than willing to work with you. If issues do come up, we'll try to find solutions with you. But just so everybody out, out there understands, this is a use permit on review, so it is watched. At any point in time, we can review this once again. So my last question is regarding kind of uh, if you have any licensure or anything. As I'm looking at the word preschool, it's kind of making me catch my breath a little bit because schools are technically closed, you know, through. And so I'm just wondering, are you at licensed as a daycare provider or is there any school part of it that you would really need to consider? Um, the preschool, I have my early childhood administration degree. And um, I run the same as the school, except like when they're out, I, I'm still open. Um, I, I have to get a conditional use permit to get my state um, license. That's why I'm doing this, so I can, so I can take kids and I'm state approved. Under daycare? Right. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? I have something. Let me have that. Okay. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, I see none. Uh, any comments or questions from the council? Hearing none, uh, we'll close the uh, hearing at uh, 7.20. Appreciate the uh, Michelle the uh, your your comments and coming tonight. And if uh, council desired, I would ask a seat or a commission a motion to uh, approve this uh, use on review this permit on review. I'll make a motion to approve uh, use permit on review. James D. Rohde, owner, Michelle Adcock, tenant, to operate a home preschool daycare at 2142 Minicotta Avenue in Hot Springs. Second. Then moved and seconded to approve this uh, use permit on review. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now we wish you success. Uh, Michelle, thank you for coming again. Thank you. We'll move back to our committee reports. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission, Allison. Planning and Zoning will be meeting on April 15th, 6 p.m. Uh, I'm assuming that one's going to be a Zoom as well. <laughs> okay. Public Safety, Bill. Okay. I'll get the marathon award tonight. Okay. Uh, public safety met on Wednesday, March 18th, 1 p.m. at City Hall. <coughs> Present were Mayor Cotty, myself, Bob, Chief Close, Captain Wayman, uh, John, and Safety Coordinator Lori Sherrard. Uh, under old business uh, regarding the FEMA grants for the identified risks under the pre-disaster mitigation plan, uh, the filing deadline has been pushed back and the process is on hold because of the current COVID-19 crisis. Um, uh, action item list uh, 20-02 regarding uh, the school resource officer. It has been reported to the committee that the proposed budget for the school contains a $40,000 line item for a school resource officer which represents approximately 60% of the cost of an officer. If this budget is approved by the school board, Chief Close will include the remaining 40% of the cost of a school resource officer in his 2021 budget. If approved by the council, we will pursue the COPS grant, which will cover a significant amount of the cost of the school resource officer for typically three years. The Public Safety Committee supports the pursuit of this. Uh, item 20-03, Captain Wayman provided an update on the efforts to improve the mental health commitment process. The next step is to be completed is a signed agreement between the qualified mental health professionals and the Fall River County Mental Health Attorney. Uh, item 20-07 uh, regarding uh, the need for a drone ordinance. Uh, no action has been taken on that. And item 20-10, uh, resolution is on this agenda to make 16th Street north of University Avenue a three-lane road. This request uh, initiated in the School Board Safety and Security Committee. The road has been measured and determined to be wide enough to accommodate three lanes at a minimum of 14 feet each. And this solution should greatly improve traffic flow when picking up children and will only result in the loss of three parking spaces on the east side of 16th Street. Under new business uh, regarding Chief Close's uh, Police Department report, uh, the, the American Legion donated Six, or I'm sorry, eight portable gas detectors to the police department. Mm -hmm. We want to thank them for that. Uh, training has been provided for most of the officers and reserve officers. Uh, these do devices will greatly improve officer safety when responding to the reported propane leaks. The coffee with the cop at the Wandering Bison went very well. 
Uh, the new Durango that uh, was ordered as part of this year's budget is in, and the police uh, will be submitting a request for a proposal for the installation of equipment on that vehicle. Uh, the department is actively working the uh, break-ins at uh, West Side Storage. Uh, regarding departmental activities for February and March, in February the department responded to 379 calls. Uh, not a complete breakdown of that, but the, of that there were seven vehicle accidents, 16 agency assists, 13 drug citations, 143 traffic stops, and 15 welfare checks. In March, our officers responded to 456 calls. Of that were eight accidents, 15 agency assists, seven drug citations, 94 traffic stops, and 17 welfare checks. Uh, also under new business, the committee participated in a COVID-19 uh, briefing for municipalities and county emergency management officials that was put on by South Dakota Department of Health. After the call, the committee discussed various prevention uh, tactics to pursue by the police and other city departments. The committee discussed the flashing lights on uh, University Avenue marking the school zone. Uh, questions have come to the uh, Public Safety Committee regarding the hours of illumination and should it be throughout the school day or just when children are coming to school and being let out. Discussions revealed that uh, though there may not be uh, routinely be many children during the middle of the day, there is a possibility of them being present at any time. Because of that, the committee does not support changing the light from the existing timing configuration. Uh, the committee also discussed the need for the caution light at University Avenue and 19th Street. It was felt that it does provide some additional notification of the school zone and absent any other reason, we support leaving it in place. The committee discussed requests for stop and yield signs at various intersections on Baltimore Avenue and Detroit Avenue. These requests have been tabled because of current budget issues and the uncertainties associated with all the recent events. We reviewed the draft mitigation strategies for the Fall River Pre-Disaster Mitigation Plan. This finalized our uh, participation in the mandated five-year review of that plan. Uh, our meeting ended at 3 p.m. Um, as a note, uh, subsequent to the meeting, I'd like to express our appreciation to the local businesses regarding conformance with Resolution 2020-11. As the mayor stated in the April 1st special meeting, he had directed the police department to perform random checks to assess compliance with Resolution 2020-11. Through April 5th, checks have shown 100% compliance regarding the number of people in places of business and only one occurrence in which uh, proper social distancing was not being maintained. So again, we want to thank the business community of Hot Springs for taking this seriously. Uh, our next meeting will be Wednesday, April 15th, 1 p.m probably at the Mueller Center, and probably face-to-face. -face. Okay, thank you. Public Works, uh, Bob and Ray. Public Works met on March 31st at uh, City Hall. No, we met down here at the Mueller Center. We maintained our physical uh, distance. Mayor Cotty, Craig, Dave, Scott, uh, Laurie Sherrard, Representative from Keith Hot Springs Beautiful. Uh, we had a private citizen join us and myself were present. Uh, had a number of new business items. Uh, we discussed uh, late fees and disconnects for customer utility bills uh, due to the coronavirus outbreak and the recommendation from the Public uh, Works Committee uh, is that the city waive the late fee uh, penalties on customer utility bills and also discontinue terminating services on utility bills. We talked about uh, Fresno Avenue and the need to have some tailings added uh, at the end of the streets um, and possibly reshaping it uh, to reduce the collection of water that's causing a problem there. 
This will be added to the normal street and alley maintenance the city does every spring. Uh, we discussed Garden Street that will be used by the fire department vehicles during the Jennings Bridge replacement. The corner of Garden Street and the area of the bridge that crosses uh, Fall River to the Brookside Apartments is currently a tight corner and needs to be improved. City staff will add fill material to the old irrigation ditch on the west side of Garden, Garden Street adjacent to the bridge to widen the corner. Uh, we discussed vacating with utility easements a number of alleys in the 26th Street Water District. Scott was asked to have everything in place to have the vacating of these alleys on the April 20th Council agenda. Um, David talked a little bit about uh, some uh, repair works that's uh, needed uh, in the parks because of Golden West. We also discussed that. Um, the city and um, parks, uh, city street and parks departments uh, have made a list of items that need to be repaired as a result of the Golden West fiber optic project that is still in progress. Golden West has been contacted about the repairs and they said these types of things, which are part of every construction project, will be addressed when phase two of the project begins around May. Uh, I talked about um, having the, the city look into a, installing a light at the end of 6th Street. Um, it gets awful dark down there, there just isn't a lot of lights. Uh, there was a question about whether that's city property or whether that's um, private property. Um, so John was going to have the city look into that and, and if it's uh, city property, see if we can't get a light added down there to brighten things up a little bit. John talked with the committee about a letter he sent to the state home requesting that our cities, requesting the city be permitted to obtain approximately 20,000 cubic yards of coarse rock material for use in our uh, city's uh, Corps of Engineer Fall River Flood Control Channel for stream bank and basin stabilization maintenance. The material would be at no cost to the city, and the committee agrees with John's request uh, to the state home. Uh, a resident asked the committee to provide additional clean rock along Sulphur Spring Street. The city has done some work, but the resident feels more fill is still needed. They also asked the city to look at an exposed sewer line they feel is being deteriorated by weather. Uh, Craig, Dave, and Bob will look at the uh, concerns raised by the resident. Craig had a number of questions. Uh, he's been asked by city residents uh, about mobile food truck vendors using the public space across from the uh, Evans Plunge. How does the city intend to use that space? He asked if Fall River County Landfill will be accepting tires for free disposal this year. John said there won't be an opportunity to dispose of the tires uh, for free this year. Craig also asked about a number of properties along Evan Street that don't comply with city ordinance and if those property, uh, properties will be addressed by the city. Uh, items 1 and 2, or 1 and 3, will need further discussion. Old business. Um, Scott has been working on removing an RV camper parked on property on Germont Street that doesn't comply with city ordinance. Uh, Scott contacted the owner of the property and was told the situation would be corrected. Uh, and after I put together the report, uh, that trailer is gone. Uh, so thank you to the uh, property owner for working with the city and getting that taken care of. Uh, and I've also heard from uh, one of the property owners out there, they appreciate uh, the work that Scott did uh, and the support that uh, the city put behind getting that taken care of. Uh, we're still discussing options for long-term management of the brush piles at the landfill. John mentioned the small trench version of the air curtain burner that we've been talking about uh, that would be less expensive. Dave's familiar with this method of burning and feels it's possible city staff could build a workable version. The trench version of an air curtain burner will be considered along with the larger air curtain burner and that uh, discussion will continue. Uh, the West Oak building, John is hopeful there will be additional requests for how to proceed with the West Oak building for the committee to discuss at our April 14th meeting. Any information the city receives will be included uh, in the packet for public review in John's office. Mayor Cotty um, would like to present to the public as soon as possible the reasoning behind the need for a suspended sidewalk along North River Street between the Jennings Bridge and the general area of Pistol Patties. 
because of the coronavirus and the need for physical distancing, the how of sharing that information is being worked out. Justin Gosman spoke with the committee about using Zoom for the presentation to the public. When the city is ready to go with the presentation, the public will be notified about dates and times. Keep Hot Springs Beautiful spoke with the community or the committee about the paths along uh, Main Street, which going forward I recommend we refer to as bump outs, the term used by the South Dakota Department of Transportation. The important point to remember is bump outs are a DOT requirement uh, for pedestrian safety and will be a part of the road reconstruction project. The question this council will need to decide is if those bump outs should be filled with concrete or dirt. If the bump outs are filled with dirt, the plannings will need to be uh, state guidelines for height restrictions. Uh, if this council decides to allow for plannings in the bump outs, Keep Hot Springs Beautiful will be needed to maintain those plantings. The, the city simply doesn't have the staff to maintain the bump outs. The final decision for, uh, for a decision about what type of fill will be in the bump outs is July 1st of this year. More realistic, the council, more realistically, the council will, be, will need to make that decision sooner. If the council is agreeable to plantings and the bump outs, more coordination with Hot Spring, Keep Hot Springs Beautiful will be necessary. Uh, the bump out continue, discussion will continue. And the last old business item uh, is a fence uh, up on the state homes uh, uh, boundaries. City crews are expecting to begin work around the beginning of May to replace that fence. Uh, the state home will provide the materials for the fence, and the city will provide the labor. Did I miss anything? I have a question. Uh, putting dirt on Garden Street on that corner, have you looked at that corner? The irrigation pipe is right on the edge of the road. To be able to put dirt on that, you're going to have to cover up that, that irrigation ditch. There won't be any water that gets to go through there. Yes, and it's my understanding that irrigation ditch isn't being used anymore. Oh, okay. Is that correct, John? Right. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks, Bob. Um, next public works meeting is scheduled for April 14th. Uh, we'll figure out where that's going to be, and we'll let the public know. Southern Hills Economic Development, uh, Caitlin? We currently don't have a meeting, I believe, scheduled. Okay. The Southern Hills Golf Course Advisory Committee, uh, there are several things. The golf course is open. Uh, they are using some special rules as a result of the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, we're allowing one person per cart unless it's a family member. Uh, and they can ride double. Uh, there's a ball riser in the cups to prevent uh, the ball from going uh, completely in so people don't have to touch the pin. Uh, they've removed all the bunker rakes. Again, those have metal handles and uh, there have been caution tape uh, placed on the ball washers to remind people of uh, not to use them. Uh, we're establishing no more than 10 people in the clubhouse, and that uh, is extended to gatherings outside the clubhouse on the veranda and uh, the gazebo. Of course, the bathrooms, the bathrooms on the course will remain closed. Uh, everyone's being reminded of the social distancing of six feet and the carts after being used are, are being sanitized. Jason is also looking at his maintenance staff uh, to uh, help reduce expenses during this time. He's also uh, limiting the number of uh, maintenance crews that are needed. He's staggering work times and limiting maintenance on the course. Just a quick note, uh, Jason pointed out that uh, of all 50 states, only 14 have closed their golf courses. Uh, 35 of the states are still operating some form, and one state is pending. And so uh, we will watch uh, on a day-to-day -day basis uh, how uh, the virus pro uh, progresses in our, our area. I know that uh, 
Our course is a popular destination course for people that are out of state and also uh, out of our community. One other thing, you do have uh, uh, on the agenda tonight, we'll be getting to that uh, as a motion uh, to look at the uh, big click deals that uh, Jason had intended to use for advertising. Uh, because of the health uh, situation, uh, we just feel comfortable in not uh, taking part in that to reduce those costs uh, so we don't have uh, a bunch of advertising going out uh, in the event that we do have to reduce uh, uh, the amount of play or close the course. And, uh, so that uh, will be considered later on. With that, uh, we know that uh, the course is providing a good outlet for some of the people in our community. And, uh, we appreciate the efforts that Jason has made to uh, keep it as safe and, and healthy as possible. That said, we'll move on to uh, Volunteer Fire Department. Ron? Community, 7 p.m. Next Tuesday evening, Volunteer Fire Department. Okay, thank you. Under our ordinances tonight, we have our second reading of Ordinance 1210, and that's the uh, Mammoth Site uh, Plan Unit Development Ordinance. Uh, I would ask for a motion to approve Ordinance uh, 1210, second reading. I make a motion to approve the second reading Ordinance 1210, an ordinance revising title, that's 15, right? Roman noodle? Roman noodle? Land Usage Chapter 155 Zoning Code to Revise 15503 Map, 15503 F1, Title PUD Number 1, Mammoth Site 15507, Board of Adjustment. Second. Okay, it's been moved and second to approve the second uh, reading of this ordinance. Are there any questions, comments from the council? Hearing none, I'd ask Misty if you'd call roll. David Burris? Yes. Ray Eckesee? Yes. Bill Lukens? Yes. Bob Nelson? Yes. Ron Richards? No. Alison Ritterbuck? Yes. Craig Romney? Yes. Caitlin Turner? Yes. Thank you. Okay, that ordinance is approved, and thank you, Preston, uh, being first out of the gate. Uh, I know it was a, a few bumps and, and bruises along the way, but we appreciate your patience with us, and I think we've got a good plan to develop the Mammoth site, a very important part of our community. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Cody and all the council. We also have on the agenda a second reading of Ordinance 1212. This is the emergency ordinance to address the public health crisis, and uh, we want to implement certain measures which have been deemed essential to slow the community spread of the COVID-19 uh, coronavirus. I'd accept a motion to approve the second reading of Ordinance 1212. I make a motion to approve the second reading of Ordinance 1212, an emergency ordinance to address a public health crisis by implementing certain measures which have been deemed necessary to slow the community spread of coronavirus COVID-19. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the second reading. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I have one question. Given the, uh, the governor's new executive order today that extended the, uh, the date, I believe, of her first executive order, she not only made it, uh, changed her language from should to shall, but I believe she extended the effective date of the executive order to May 31st. Do we need to adjust the effective date of this ordinance? And I apologize, I did. I thought I had it in front of me. Let's see, uh, I, it seems like our effective date was sooner than that, or our end date. Oh, was the end date. Okay. No, our end date is May 31st. Okay, so we're we're good. Okay, okay good thank point. You. And of course, that can change as the situation changes, but that would have to be done uh, by the council vote. Uh, are there any other discussion? Hearing none, Misty, I'd ask if you'd call the roll, please. David Burris? Yes. 
Ray Ekafee? Yes. Bill Lukens? Yes. Bob Nelson? Yes. Ron Richards? No. Allison Ritterbush? Yes. Kate Craig Romney? Yes. Caitlin Turner? Yes. Thank you. I didn't want to change my first name. <laughs> that ordinance is approved and uh, we're trusting that the Hot Springs, that the uh, Fall River Herald Star will get that published so that we can go into effect. Uh, appreciate all the council's work on this. It's a very, very important measure to protect our community. Thank you. You also have in your packages uh, ordinance 1211, and that's a fine and bond schedule for the city of Hot Springs, and that uh, provides some pretty hefty uh, fines uh, for our fire uh, fireworks. Uh, but you, you please remember the fireworks have been extended uh, and they can be uh, uh, shot off. So I'd ask for a motion to approve the first reading of Ordinance 1211. Make a motion to approve the first reading of Ordinance 1211, an ordinance amending the fine and bond schedule for the City of Hot Springs. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve uh, that ordinance. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? I have a comment. Right now, we can't get the police department to pick people up off the off streets of Hot Springs and use this. Craig, will you go into the microphone just a little bit? I can't hear you very well. We cannot get the police department to pick people up on the off-roads, the main streets of Hot Springs, and use this. I could probably bet anybody money since 2014 when we revised this then, that there has been one ticket written off the main streets of this. And now you're thinking that they're going to drive those streets and use this then? I, I think we're wasting our time. That's my opinion. Any other comments? I, I disagree with Councilman Romy. Um, I'm not going to argue with Councilman Romy. I disagree. We specifically made this, ask for this change because of the reasoning for the fine would be because of uh, uh, shooting off fireworks because of a fire danger so it's not just a matter of an individual deciding I, mean, I want to shoot fireworks it would be during a community when the community fire danger is uh, very high or extreme so we had our reasoning we have discussed this for several months so I think our reasoning is sound and uh, we can disagree probably quite a long time, Councilman Romy, on whether or not the police will enforce this. So that's all I got to say about that. Any other comments? Hearing none, I'd ask Misty if you'd call the roll, please. David Burris? Yes. Ray Epstein? Yes. Bill Lukens? Yes. Bob Nelson? Yes. Ron Richards? No. Allison Ritterbush? Yes. Craig Romy? No. Caitlin Turner? Yes. Thank you. Okay, that first reading has passed. Move on in our agenda to resolutions. Uh, as we talked about earlier uh, in public safety meeting, uh, a resolution to add uh, change lanes that travel <coughs> from 16th Street north of the University at the high school. I'd ask a uh, motion to approve that resolution that's in your packages. 2020-12. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2020-12, a resolution to add and change lanes of travel on 16th Street north of University Avenue at the high school. Second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, approve resolution 2020-12. Is there any discussion? And again, public safety recommends approval. Yes, we do. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We do have an item for discussion. Uh, and this is, uh, would have been a resolution to uh, 
limit uh, amending ordinance 12-12 uh, as part of the city of Hot Springs. Specifically, uh, the discussion has been on uh, salons, barbershops, and so forth to uh, demand that they be, be closed. And I would like to open that if any of the council does have a, uh, a comment to make on that. Uh, please do so at this time. Mayor Cotty? Yes. Uh, since I kind of opened that door for discussion, I do have a comment. Uh, during the discussion and prior to the vote on the first reading of Ordinance 1212 on April 1st, I brought up the possibility of adding to the ordinance language calling for the closure of spas, salons, and other such um, con close contact businesses. Discussion ensued that a resolution would likely be the best way to address such an issue. Since that meeting, I have given the request by those business owners to close them down much thought and have come to the conclusion for the following reasons that it is not the responsibility of the city to make that directive through either ordinance or resolution for the following reasons. One, based on our current understanding, whatever federal and state economic assistance that may be available is not reliant upon municipalities' closure orders. Two, the executive order issued by Governor Nome calls for every South Dakotan as individuals and business owners to take steps to stop the spread of the virus. When distancing, barriers, and modified business models cannot be incorporated, the only option may be closure. Each of us must make a contact-by-contact -contact risk assessment, not only for ourselves, but our families, employees, and clients. When we determine that risk that risk to be unacceptable as a business owner, again, closure may be the only option. Fourthly, for the city to mandate the closure of an entire class or group of businesses, we would be inferring that no individual owner or operator has the resources and innovation to appropriately manage the COVID-19 risk in their business operation. An ordinance or resolution implementing that ordinance would, it seems in my opinion, negate the efforts of the individual businesses by preventing or delaying the restart of their businesses with those new safeguards in place without appropriate action by the city council. Therefore, I would vote no on resolution, if this resolution 2020-13 comes to a vote, I would have to vote no. So thank you for causing us to more thoroughly consider this issue. Okay, thank you. Are there any other comments from the council? I have some. Sure. Um, my understanding of what was asked of the council at the, the last special meeting uh, was to address two issues. Um, and the, the request was that we uh, mandate closures uh, for two reasons. One is to provide uh, those businesses um, to make it easier for them to apply for financial assistance because we told them they had to close. And that's the first one I'd like to address. Uh, and because uh, the individual uh, that spoke about that first isn't here, uh, I want to say publicly that um, we do take those requests and those concerns seriously. Uh, it was uh, recent, recent, am I saying that correctly? Um, that first raised the issue about uh, mandatory closures so that uh, her business would uh, be in a better position to qualify for financial assistance. Uh, and that, that concern I take seriously. That, that one is legitimate. Uh, she provided an email to support why she was asking for those mandatory closures. Uh, she provided this to Misty, so uh, Ressa, uh, Misty did forward it on for the council's review. Uh, and she's speaking of a particular uh, situation uh, that uh, grants would be um, available a one-time $1,000 grant. Uh, to qualify, applicants must um, 
live in a state or county that has mandated the closure of non-essential businesses. So she had something to back that up. Uh, but as part of that discussion, uh, she and Allison uh, did some back and forth because my understanding is Allison finds herself in the same situation. Uh, so the aid that's available is evolving. Uh, it's a, it's a, a daily thing. Um, so I did some looking myself to see what might be available out there. Uh, and it all revolves around the CARES Act. Uh, section of that uh, specifically pandemic emergency unemployment compensation um, provide unemployment to self-employed workers who don't traditionally qualify include supplemental benefits provide extra work benefits um, that information can be found at the balanced careers website governor no when she was uh, addressing uh, South Dakota today talked about uh, the covid.sd.gov uh, website that provides all kinds of um, assistance. Uh, sdreadytowork uh, sdreadytowork slash covid19.com provides um, assistance uh, for small business and self-employed folks. Um, so, as Bill said, um, I, if the resolution was in front of us, I would vote no for it. Uh, I think there is that assistance that's available. Everyone recognizes that this is evolving uh, and what uh, businesses that traditionally would qualify, uh, they need to expand that. There are other people that are hurting and that assistance is, uh, is out there for them. The other one that, trouble, that frustrates me is that we were asked to provide cover for businesses uh, whose clients don't respect the difficult decision that they have to make. Rather than giving them flag, they should be thanking them uh, for thinking enough about themselves first and then as customers to say, I would love to have you in here, but I can't do that. Uh, it's not right for me and it's not right for you. We'll get through this. Um, we'll start doing business again together. So my request to those people would be um, step up. Do the right thing. Rather than looking for somebody to blame because you can't get that service provided, recognize why that service can't be provided and it's the right thing to do. Um, as a body, it's not our place to provide cover. While I respect the, the person's right, to make that statement, I couldn't disagree more with them that they somehow feel that's our responsibility is to provide cover, it's not. Um, so for those two reasons, uh, if the resolution was in front of us, I wouldn't support it. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the council? Yes. Great. I agree with Bill and Bob both. To me, it sounded like they was more worried about they're going to make a living versus the safety of people. I mean, they did sound concerned sometimes, but it seemed like it's all about the mighty dollar to me. Why they wanted to shut them down so they could get unemployment. So I agree with those two. I come forth, I'll vote no to. Okay. Any other comments from the council? Uh, yeah, I couldn't disagree more that it's about the mighty dollar. Um, I know from being a uh, self-employed person, and, and uh, both my husband and I are, that it was about trying to figure out the best way to keep yourself safe and your uh, clients safe. And I know that it's su it was super hard for them to try to make the decision. Uh, I was a little bit worried um, that some of the therapists and salon owners may not know what was going on, so I called everybody that I could think of, and it was true, not all, not all the therapists knew that that was something that we were considering or that had been brought forward, and that's one of the, the things that I worry about, that any type of resolution like that would mean um, that some people simply would not know that. But I was so impressed with everybody that I talked to about how worried they are about being the one that contracts it, starts it, anything. I, I'm nothing but thoroughly impressed by our, our uh, small business owners 
here in town about how worried they really are about this. So um, I really wanted to get behind them and give them any support that we can. And I still feel like um, that they can, as a group, decide to do this and close down um, a, a, a coalition and know that they have the backing of the city, not by resolution necessary or ordinance, but that we have, you have our backing, or at least mine, I can only speak for myself, that whatever you decide to do to close down, we will absolutely back that and support any decision you make. But it is going to be very hard to do that by resolution or ordinance. I feel like you have the, the ability to do it without um, us imposing that. And I also want to leave you open to have the decision about when you get to start back up. And that was one of the things that um, they didn't, when I was sharing with people some of my concerns, they didn't even think that they would have to wait for us to lift that. So they may feel very good that they're ready to go and then we still have a week and a half before a, a council meeting or we have to try to put together um, a council meeting to lift that. And so I still wanted to leave that right for them to be able to get back to work as soon as they possibly could. Um, so I, I also am, am with um, what is being uh, suggested uh, regarding why we wouldn't necessarily go that way but want to know that you have uh, my backing for any closure that you have to have to make and I know how difficult that is to do Thank you any other comments from the council Again, this was a item for discussion. Are there any comments from the audience? Seeing none we'll go ahead and close uh, this uh, discussion on resolution 2020-13 and move on to new business uh, first item is to authorize the finance officer to waive late fee penalties to city uh, utility bills that are unpaid. And so I would uh, would ask for a motion to approve uh, approve that waiving of the of the fees. I make a motion to authorize the finance office to waive late fee penalties to city utility bills unpaid by the due date and to also discontinue terminating services by disconnection on unpaid bills effective for a minimum of 90 days unless rescinded sooner by future action of the council. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to waive these fees. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Again, I remind uh, everyone that uh, this was discussed in uh, uh, Public uh, Works and uh, Bob, uh, the Public Works Committee recommends that this be passed, correct? Yes. Okay. And I think it's a, an excellent uh, thing to do as part of a city that uh, some that may be struggling as a result of, of not having uh, employment, full employment. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Also have uh, before you uh, item B, a motion to authorize the uh, police department to apply for the Department of Homeland Security FEMA uh, grant. Uh, that would be uh, submitted uh, to uh, outfit uh, a new vehicle the approximate value of that grant would be $10,000, and this would be in the 2021 budget. I would ask for a motion to authorize the police department to apply for this grant. I'll make a motion to authorize the police department to apply for the Department of Homeland Security, DHS, Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, State Homeland Security Program, SHSP grant. Application will be submitted with a request to purchase the Dodge Durango grant award would be 100% reimbursement. The city would be responsible for outfitting the vehicle at an approximate cost of $10,000, potentially a 2021 expense. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to authorize the application of this grant. Uh, are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We also have a motion before you uh, to refund uh, two uh, secondhand license fees of $100. Uh, we did change that ordinance, and I would uh, ask for a motion to authorize our finance officer to make those refunds. 
I make a motion to authorize the finance office to refund two $100 2020 secondhand license fees due to the recent change in the city ordinance and licensing requirements, ordinance 1209. Second. And moved and seconded to refund uh, those secondhand license fees. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? I think I have to abstain from this. I think my sister in law is one of them. That okay, I we'll uh, note that uh, Councilman Romy is abstaining. Are there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Motion carries. A couple of meetings ago, we approved the uh, purchase of a QT pod model 4000 self serve fielding terminal for the airport uh, due to uh, potential revenue uh, losses due to the pandemic. Uh, we're asking the council to uh, rescind uh, that approval at this time. I make a motion to rescind the 31620 Council approval of the QT pod model M4000 self service fueling terminal. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we uh, uh, suspend this uh, purchase. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Uh, one comment uh, our airport manager has been in contact with uh, the QT folks and one of the reasons we were acting on this now is we were going to get almost two thousand dollars credit for the existing model and given the, the current uh, COVID-19 crisis they are extending uh, uh, that that offer at least a, a couple of months or a few months beyond the June deadline so we've got a little bit of time that we can still take advantage of this once we understand our finances better. Okay, great. And that's, uh, that gives us more time to check those, those revenues too. Great. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. You have in your packages uh, uh, the uh, invitation to uh, bid by Bros Engineering. That's for our Jennings Avenue bridge structure replacement and includes all, uh, such things as approach grading, curb and gutter, asphalt paving, and other incidentals. I'd ask for a motion to approve the authorization of Rose Engineering to uh, invite bids for that project. I'll make a motion to authorize the Rose Engineering invitation to bid BRO 8024-00-18-1. PCM 06V1 Jennings Avenue Bridge Structure Replacement Approach Grading Curb and Gutter Asphalt Pavement and Incidentals. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve uh, this authorization. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Council, is anybody interested in the drawings for that project or any particular specifications? I've got copies of all that at my desk. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you, John. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, that uh, motion is carried. And uh, motion, uh, item F is a possible motion to authorize the Southern Hills Golf Course uh, superintendent to enter into a trade agreement with uh, Click Big Deals. Again, Jason. Uh, uh, when he originally uh, negotiated for this advertisement, uh, we were not in the serious situation of uh, uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic. So uh, he is asking that that be uh, denied. And so I'd ask for a motion to authorize this. And then I'd ask for the council to vote to deny it. I make a motion to authorize Southern Hills Golf Course Superintendent Jason Happy to enter into the trade contract with Click Big Deals, allowing for the sale of 40 vouchers good for 18 holes of play in exchange for 12,000 in advertising. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to authorize this. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? 
And that, you know, as I think back on this, if nobody would have made the motion, this would have died, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, bureaucracy at work. I'm sorry. I apologize. At least it gave us a good chuckle. We need those every once in a while, right? <laughs> All those in favor, Mayor, signify by saying. Mayor Connie, oh. I'm, I'm glad that we did have the motion so that we can have a discussion part of it. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, I, I would like to thank Jason for reconsidering it. Uh, we as a city have been asking our department heads to take a look and make sure that what they need to spend is truly what they need to spend. Uh, when Jason uh, submitted this at the time, he felt like uh, there was a good trade-off here. Uh, that uh, by providing some 18-hole uh, passes, we could generate some advertising revenue. Um, and I appreciated him stepping up and saying, you know what, when I looked at it, uh, this can't wait. This doesn't need to happen right now. We shouldn't be spending uh, potential money here. So I just want to thank him publicly. Uh, so I appreciate the opportunity to vote against his <laughs> original recommendation, but I, I wanted to acknowledge him. So thank you. No, th I, and I think that's uh, well said, uh, Bob. Uh, and, uh, you know, one other consideration is that, uh, uh, you know, we, we are in a situation where we don't want a lot of uh, intercity, interstate uh, travel. And this uh, Big Clicks was designed to get people from out of the Hot Springs area uh, down to Hot Springs to play golf. So, with that said, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. All those opposed. Signify by saying nay. 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 The opposed have it. The motion fails. Moving on in our agenda, finance officer report, Misty. Thank you, and I apologize to those council members who did not have your monthly finance officer report in your folders. I did email them out. Um, they just weren't done in time for your packets. It's been a little crazy. It's a y'all. So uh, I'm sorry if you didn't get it on time, but I emailed it. Um, and if anybody would like a hard copy, I've got some extras here. I did prepare the typical financial reports through the 31st of March. They include the year-to-date profit loss summary report, the fund summary report, the cash balance report, and the investment reports. I will note that we're not seeing a significant decline yet, but we're about 30 days behind. Um, so I imagine by April we'll be having a different conversation. Uh, amidst the fears and concerns surrounding COVID-19, our city is working hard to find new ways to continue to work and provide the needed services. Each of our departments and functions have implemented new rules and processes to guide operations outside of our normal. There's no doubt that the impact on our local economy is happening right now and will continue well into 2020. Although we really don't know what the total impact will be, I can tell you that we rely on sales tax for nearly one-third of our general fund operations. It's not just this one revenue source that will be impacted. I imagine our entire community is going to feel the impacts of this. The anticipated shortfall will have serious consequences for our budgets, and in an effort to prepare, the finance office has requested that all city departments be mindful of the current economic picture and limit spending to essential needs only at this time. Although the 2020 budget is already in place, that budget was determined with projected revenues that will undoubtedly fall short of expectations. We will continue to monitor and adjust spending as we can, and we'll be reviewing financial data and discussing our plans at the next and throughout, um, at the next admin and finance committee meeting and continue throughout the year. I did want to note the extraordinary importance of leadership in dealing with this pandemic. Thank you to our mayor, our council, our administration, and our department heads that are all being tasked with moving quickly and decisively. We're all in uncomfortable positions of asking so many to sacrifice so much. There's no doubt that painful decisions and cuts will need to be made by all. I want to thank each of you for the extra time and attention you're taking to help our city make it through this difficult time. Without your leadership and guidance, we certainly would be lost. We've closed Evans Punch Mineral Springs, the library, the police department, and city hall to the public. At this time, full-time workers are still showing up and doing their jobs and so much more. But we've had to temporarily lay off the number of part-time workers. We've suspended all recreation activities until further notice. 
No hiring is taking place for those activities at this time. Early on, we shared information with affected employees for reemployment insurance benefits, formerly known as unemployment, and the claim forms have been pouring in. At this time, we have not laid off or furloughed any full-time employees. One of the changes we're experiencing is the way in which we conduct our meetings. It's so important that we continue to meet and discuss city business. But we also need to minimize the risk of exposure to not only our council, but our citizens. The city set up an account with Zoom. We are going to try it for this meeting. We may continue to try it, but with any new thing, it's having has its problems, and so we're working through those. Um, hopefully, we'll expand the use of this software to include more than just council meetings, um, but more discussion will happen on that. I've been working to review and understand the impacts of the federal coronavirus relief bill recently passed by Congress, which includes the Families First Coronavirus Relief Act, FFCRA, and the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, which the mayor referred to as the CARES. The FFCRA, which includes the Emergency Paid Sick Leave Act and the Emergency Family and Medical Leave Expansion Act, provides paid leave provisions effective April 1 and applies to leave taken between April 1 and December 31st of this year. The provisions include two weeks up to 80 hours of paid sick leave at an employer's regular rate of pay where the employee is unable to work because the employee is quarantined pursuant to a federal, state, or local government um, or the advice of a health order or the advice of a health care provider and or experiencing COVID-19 symptoms and seeking a medical diagnosis or two weeks up to 80 hours of paid sick leave at two-thirds the employee's regular rate of pay because they're unable to work because of a bona fide need to care for an individual subject to quarantine and again that's pursuant to federal state or local government order or the advice of a health care provider or care for a child under 18 years of age whose school or child care provider is closed or unable for unable to, to attend for reasons related to COVID-19. I'm working with our payroll software company to establish the means to track both emergency sick leave covered by the Act and the expanded paid family and medical leave pay should an employee be impacted by COVID-19. As you know, the city had six council seats and the mayor position that were up for re-election this year. Nominating petitions were submitted by Bob Nelson for mayor, who is unopposed. Ward 1, two-year term, Larry Pratt, unopposed. Ward 2, two-year term, William Lukens, unopposed. Ward 3, two-year term, Johnny R. Huddleston, unopposed. Ward 3, one-year term, West Grimes, unopposed. Ward 4, two-year term, Deborah A. Johnston and Caitlin Turner, and work for one year term, no petitions. So we'll need no point in the future. Uh, the city will have only the one position on the 2020 municipal election for the Ward 4 two year term ballot. The election's still scheduled for June 2nd and we're encouraging voters to utilize the absentee voting process. Absentee voting begins April 17th and runs through the 1st of June. Contact the Fall River County Auditor's Office for additional information. Um, I talk about the 2020 hang at the airport request for proposal. We haven't received any yet. And then the other is the livestock grazing storing and or feeding in areas A and B. Um, the livestock grazing storing and feeding bid is due by April 20th and we'll have to look at the hang one and maybe go out for bids again because we did not receive any. I am almost finished with the 2019 annual report and accompanying financial statements. I'm still on track to have those presented to the council by the first meeting in May. I started sending a number of the work papers, roll forwards, and analyticals and the various reports to our auditors so they can start pulling their review and choose the items to test. I have been in contact with the auditors regarding their schedule, and at this time, they're still planning it the first week in May. However, they may not be present at our location as they have in the past. I will continue to stay in contact with them, do whatever's necessary to get our reports done on time. Governor Nolan granted the following days of, as administrative leave days, Friday, April 10th, and Monday, April 13th. In her email, she stated, and I'd like to repeat it here, I truly believe that strong families create strong communities, and this Easter, I want to make sure you have a little extra time to invest in the people around you. 
and granting administrative leave April 10th and 13th to all State of South Dakota employees under the authority of the Governor's Office. I hope you'll take this time to rest and make memories with those you love. Thank you for the excellent work you do and your dedication to the people of South Dakota. Happy Easter. It's the policy of the city to follow the direction of the governor and state, and so therefore will be closed April 10th and 13th. I mentioned some other ordinances, ordinance revisions that have been put on the back burner in the last month. Uh, we're still working on a number of those. We need some input from some committees and some department heads, but we are still working to get a few of those revised, and I've listed them out in my memo. Um, March was another tough month. Thank you for all you do for our city. Um, we'll remain strong and resilient, and I'm certain we'll not only recover, but we'll prosper. But it's going to take a little work. Thanks. Hey, thanks, Misty. John, uh, City Administrator Report, please. Well, it's been a busy time with COVID-19. COVID-19 is being shut down. We are getting a lot of work done on our other projects before we put in upstairs. Painting the big slide is a huge project. Getting the remaining painting there. Libraries have been closed and open again, but they are currently doing curbside to the floor. Uh, the Miller Civic Center is officially closed, uh, but the Chamber of Commerce is still taking their walk in people one at a time by appointment, and we are using them to still do various meetings. Gray, the golf course is open and there's a local first. Everybody get out and go for a uh, Summer rec items are all on hold until at least May. We have a lot of ordinances and resolutions to review and consider and all the input that came with it. In addition to two special meetings. Uh, suspended sidewalk project has been discussed here briefly. Have a DOT agreement we need to be considering soon. Uh, some provisions, but fortunately, the university bridges are not part of that requirement for us. Uh, ISG has provided us an updated service proposal and a cost opinion for the construction of that suspended sidewalk system from Jennings Bridge to approximately Pistol Patties for your consideration. We also just received the updated DOT drawings for the reconstruction work of Highway 18 and Highway 385 in Georgia. It's nice to see that they have upgraded a lot of the storm drainage that we've talked about being a problem for our meetings. The Mueller system, Mueller Civic Center geothermal system has been a big time consuming effort for a lot of people, a lot of our crews. The water leak is fixed, the loop is closed. Without losing water. Uh, the balance of system is being unique, but we do have heat on one side of the building or the other. We will have to do more in the future to, to complete the system, but we're going to wait until after the, the COVID 19 crisis fallout. Maybe have a 2021 budget item to do some additional work on that. I want to acknowledge Tom Mass, has done a lot of work with us on that system. He got us money. Like this can set our department heads and been advised to restrict their spending to essential spending only, whatever possible. We did not know the full economic impact of this. Street departments spent extra work on alleys, repairs, to various complaints. We had some material spending on that, but it's generally all been in today. We've got Jennings Bridge project coming up out for bids. There are three bidders already listed on Rose Engineering's website. We should have three competitive bids for that. The bid away, we will receive to open up will be the 20th of this month. At that time, I will be suggesting we postpone the start of construction until at least September, where we might get a piece of our tourism season here. Rose is also proposed to do our bridge inspections that are required in 2020 looking at their, their cost proposal and that is it seems in line uh, of good value for what they're offering. The Parks Department has started their spring cleaning and stepped up the repairs needed in various places. 
removal of limbs from the Freeman Trail. Uh, pretty weed emergence is fixing to come up. They're going to have to get that out. Removal off that's planned for May 8th has been rescheduled for Wednesday, August 19th. Uh, they've also added the no alcohol signs to the Brookside Park there. Uh, we have work inspection today on brush pile area. The other areas in that facility like DNR and all went well. We are accumulating trees and limbs and brush. Just a reminder, we do not take wood or trash in those piles. Uh, it's amazing today that there's a constant stream of people in and out of there the entire time I was down there. We received over 100 new garbage totes and they will be distributed to replace broken ones. We have a particular broken garbage can. Tracy Bastion has been working on the Fall River Channel improvements for his pilot program he's proposed. Has been soliciting some quotes on that. We're also looking at a U.S. Forestry Service grant uh, to help with some of that work with the pedestrian bridge. The second area they were looking at along the south side of the plunge uh, along the river's edge there. Okay, thank, you. thank you, John. A lot going on. I guess, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank you as a council. Uh, we've had some pretty difficult decisions to make here in the last uh, couple of weeks of a very unusual situation. And I appreciate the dedicated research and uh, well thought out. Uh, I think that we've done the best we could. We just need to keep praying that uh, that number one case stays at one and that one person that's healed stays healed. I also want to thank the citizens of Hot Springs. Uh, our spot checks uh, show that uh, people are taking this seriously and I really uh, appreciate that. Uh, but we're in for a long haul. Every time Governor Nome speaks uh, and gives a, a daily press briefing, she makes mention that we are in for the long haul. And so we look like uh, the latest uh, models show that uh, we'll peak sometime in June. And uh, if you watch some of the larger cities, what that peaking means, uh, that can be a very serious time. Uh, we in the Black Hills area have uh, a limited amount of, uh, of uh, medical supplies compared to, to some of the larger uh, cities. So that's why we need to continue to uh, mitigate and keep that spread down as much as we can. And I think our community realizes that and is doing that. And obviously as a council we'll have to continue to keep monitoring the situation so that we can react quickly if changes need to be made to help uh, mitigate the, uh, the spread. I did sign a, uh, a public health emergency recommendation letter that was uh, circulated by the, uh, uh, by the Municipal League as a result of the failure of Senate Bill 191 to pass. And basically what that uh, is asking is that the uh, governor would declare a public health emergency in South Dakota. Uh, the current authority that uh, governs that goes back to 1939 and some of the legal scholars have concern that uh, that's been untested and may not be adequate. Uh, also the method of enforcing that is quite cumbersome. Uh, for example, uh, counties, uh, there's uh, confusion as to what authority a county has, and that uh, that leads to some concern uh, because uh, we can have all of our businesses here in Hot Springs limited, ten people practicing social uh, distancing, but can go out to Maverick Junction and there's no authority to put any kind of limits on them, or the Angus Store Den, or uh, and other counties are facing the same thing. I know Pennington County is. I noticed it was business at, as usual as uh, at some of the uh, businesses along Highway 385 this past weekend. So 
hopefully that will uh, authorize the counties to take some uh, more aggressive action and uh, uh, ensure that uh, that those uh, guidelines are uh, have some legal teeth behind them. And one other area that the emergency declaration, uh, at least the municipal league feels, it gives uh, the city, uh, the state, and residents uh, uh, a little bit more ease in obtaining federal relief. Uh, it might be one less hoop to, to have to jump through. Now that we've uh, passed the ordinance, and it's been mentioned by Misty and John tonight, We've got some facilities that are closed. We've got some employees that we've got to deal with, and I've asked uh, John and Misty to uh, uh, get uh, uh, with uh, the department heads and develop a plan that's fair. Uh, we do, we've got great employees. We don't want to uh, penalize them, uh, but we also want to give them the opportunity to get give them the benefits that they need, and so. Uh, We'll take a good a good look at how uh, we will be staffing, particularly the plunge and library, uh, and some of the other departments that have uh, part-time employees. As been mentioned before, we're looking at working with a to get a presentation for the suspended sidewalk. Uh, my thought is to try to do that uh, Facebook Live. Uh, people then can watch that later and uh, they can make comments uh, or ask questions that we'll try to, uh, uh, to answer. Uh, we are getting to the point we want to get that agreement. If we are, if the council is going to uh, sign that, we want to get that voted on at the next meeting. And so I encourage you, if anyone on the council does have any questions uh, about our agreement and the sidewalk design, please don't hesitate to ask. As uh, Misty read, uh, we do have uh, a new council that will be coming on. And uh, my last week has been kind of hectic. Uh, I'm going to, I guess, officially and publicly announce that uh, I've been asked and have uh, said yes to officially be a candidate for the South Dakota Senate uh, seat here in District 30. I've been approached by several people and uh, I think we're we're at a place where uh, we're going to be in a recovery mode in the next year and uh, one of our District 30 is a, a big tourism area from all to New Underwood, uh, through parts of Rapid City, Mount Rushmore, Keystone, Hill City, and Custer, and certainly here in Hot Springs. And uh, I think it's important that we have a, a voice that uh, is ensuring that we get uh, a fair shake at getting a hand up uh, to get back on our feet, and I felt that that was uh, was something that uh, was worth fighting for, and that's one of the reasons that I uh, allowed myself to, to uh, go out and hustle uh, 50 signatures on a petition. The other thing that I think is important for our area is Ellsworth Air Force Base and the B-21 bed down, and uh, I think that's a very excellent opportunity for us to gain some uh, technical uh, businesses and technology businesses within our area along with uh, that usually goes with the new weapons system along with uh, helping our uh, uh, school, uh, South Dakota School of Mines uh, they do have uh, programs that would be able to fit in and uh, be able to assist industry in that area so uh, those are things that we want to look uh, forward to uh, we know this pandemic is going to be over, and we're, as Misty said, we're going to survive. We're going to be better for it in the end, and uh, so I would uh, ask you to keep your head up, and uh, we'll be looking ahead, and uh, along the way we'll make uh, wise decisions.
based on the circumstances that we face. And again, I appreciate uh, all of your input and I appreciate the public's uh, ability to uh, be in compliance with that, which what we're asking. With that said, I would uh, ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. And moved and seconded, we adjourn. I assume there's no discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you.